Greetings booktubers and welcome to Grammaticus Books. And today on Grammaticus Books, we're gonna be going over the Ringworld series in general by Larry Niven. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about the third novel in that series, The Ringworld Throne. And we're gonna to try to answer the question, is this a proper heir to the throne, the Ringworld? Is it a, uh, a worthy heir to the throne? Or is it a beggarly upstart? Is it a pretender to that throne? And by the end of this video here, I think we're gonna be able to answer that question. But before we can talk about this third novel, Ringworld Throne, which was published in 1996, we need to briefly uh, talk about the first two books, uh, Ringworld and Ringworld Engineer, so we can kind of set the stage for this third one. So the first book in the series is Ringworld, published in 1970 by Larry Niven. I did a full review on this book. I'll link it a description. I'll link a, put a link to this book, that review, down in the description. That's what I'm trying to say. But this book in 1970 here by Larry Niven is a seminal book in science fiction. This is the book that establishes the entire genre of celestial scaled megastructures with the creation of the ring world here in this eponymously titled book. And the ring world itself is this massive structure that is roughly the size of the Earth's orbit about the sun. It's a band of material about the size of the Earth's orbit about the sun, but it's also a million miles wide. It has rim walls a thousand miles high that contain an atmosphere. The entire inside of this ring world has been terraformed, creating a geologic footprint three million times the size of planet Earth. And the entire ring world spins at 770 miles per second, imparting it roughly an Earth-like gravity so that hominids can live on it. And it is populated with trillions of hominids. And hominids are just bipedal sapiens that inhabit ring world. They're native to ring world. So that's the first book. The characters that Louis Wu, Wu, Louis Wu, the characters that Larry Niven inserts into the ring world in book one are as his main character, uh, who is Louis Gridley Wu, who goes by Louis Wu. And then there's Tila Brown, who is a female who is bred for luck. She is the product of six generations in a row who have won the birthright lottery on earth, making her the luckiest person alive. The third individual is a Pearson's puppeteer alien that has orchestrated this entire trip to the ring world known as Nessus. And then the fourth person, the fourth individual is another alien, a, a Kazinti warrior uh, known as Speaker to Animals. And he's right here on the cover of the, of the novel here. And think an eight, foot tall, an eight foot tall tiger, bipedal tiger. And that's your Kazinti warrior, Speaker to Animals. And they go to the ring world, discover it, and have their adventures on the ring world. And that is the first book. So after the first book, uh, Larry Niven never intended to write a sequel to The Ringworld. He thought he was just going to be done with it. But unfortunately for Larry, a lot of very smart people had looked at the math and his construction of The Ringworld and had determined that it was unstable. And in particular, a group of MIT engineering students had determined that it was unstable and they tracked down Larry Niven uh, at a science fiction convention and they walked through the halls of the convention shouting out, The Ringworld is unstable! The Ringworld is unstable! And this and a lot of other pressure um, convinced Larry Niven to publish in 1980, The Ringworld Engineers, which fixed some of the instabilities that he had written into the first novel. So those are the first two books and they're very good. And again, I did a full review on the first book, Ringworld, and I'll link, it, uh, the, I'll link that video in the description down below. But that leads us to the third novel, the Ringworld Throne, published by Larry Niven in 1996, 16 years after Ringworld Engineers. And he again reintroduces Louis Wu to the Ringworld uh, in Ringworld Throne. He has the hindmost, a uh, Pearson's puppeteer. And for a time, he has Chimi, the Kazinti warrior formerly known as Speaker to Animals. And then after Chimi leaves the book, which is fairly early, uh, Larry Niven then introduces Chimi's son, Acolyte, who was born on Ringworld and becomes part of the crew. And you have two main plot, th plot threads and groups of people that you're following here in Ringworld Engineers. You have Louis Wu and his group, and then you have a group of uh, native hominids to Ringworld led by a machine person named Vala Verglin. And Vala is a lady who's a machine person and she's leading a group of machine people and a bunch of other hominids in a convoy of machine people land cruisers across the face of, a, of the ring world as they prosecute a war against an expanding hive of uh, vampire hominids. And those are your two main plot lines. 
And at the end of the book, these plot lines sort of converge uh, and come to a climax. And if I was going to describe the novel, I know that's very complicated, and I'm going to get to the complicated nature of the plot here in my review of it. But if I was going to describe the book on a whole, it's sort of like sci-fi tourism. It's kind of like a National Geographic episode uh, of the Ring World, exploring all the different hominids and their cultures uh, as Vala and uh, the other uh, machine people travel across the face of Ring World. I'm looking into all these other hominid cultures and exploring them in detail, all their customs and cultures and uh, their interactions. And that's really what the, is contained in this book. So what did I like about this book? What are the pros of it? Well, the pros of it are that it does explore all those cultures in depth. Because in the first novel, my main complaint with this novel, the first Marine World novel, which is an excellent book, but my one complaint was that it didn't really explore uh, in detail, all these different hominid communities that Larry Niven had populated on the face of the ring world. And I would have liked to have seen more of that. And that is precisely uh, what you get here in the ring world throne, uh, particularly with the machine people convoy led by Vala as they fight these uh, vampire hominids. And you get a lot of that, um, a lot of that depth that you missed in the first novel is placed into here in the ring world throne. The other thing that I liked is you have this whole a thread line with the vampires. And the vampires are, are in, in these novels from the start, but you really get into the vampire hominids here in the third book. And the vampires are a, um, a group of the pack breeders, the original inhabitants of Ringworld that have evolved over millions of years to fill this ecological niche, basically of vampire bats. And they're intel semi-intelligent hominids, bipedal hominids, but they, they hunt by excreting pharaohs and singing songs. And any other hominid that smells the pharaohs of a uh, vampire while it's singing these songs, like Odysseus and the Sirens, will be compelled to tear off their, their clothes. They lose all their uh, higher mental capacities, all their higher brain functions, and they just rip off their clothes. And their only desire is to go into mate with that vampire whose pharaohs they have caught the scent of. And then, of course, the vampire will mate with them, but then drink all of their blood and kill them during the mating. And if a, a another hominid is unable to get to a vampire when they're driven into this craze, into this frenzy, then they will mate with whoever they're next to. And this makes for some great conflict and plot lines that Larry Niven uh, weaves through this uh, novel here to good effect, and I did like that as well. The third thing that I liked about this book was a technological aspect that he puts into it, a good sci-fi technology aspect of stepping disks. And these are Pearson's puppeteer's inventions that are like a silver disc that you step onto it. And once you step onto it, you are instantly transported to a, a connecting disc, which can be anywhere along the millions and millions of miles of the ring world or in space or in a spaceship. And it makes for some great little technology threads that he puts into here. And eventually these stepping discs get turned into weapons. They get turned into traps. You can set uh, the settings on these uh, discs in order for them to only transport a certain type of material in order to filter out who can and can go through it or what type of an object can go through it. And he plays with this quite a bit, and it's very satisfying. It reminds me a lot of the PC game uh, Portal, if you're familiar with that. So those are the good things about the book. What are the cons about this book? Well, if one of the pros was you got to have sort of this meandering National Geographic uh, tourism exploration of all the uh, hominid uh, different races and cultures here in Ringworld Throne, then one of the negatives is you have this meandering National Geographic uh, episode of just wandering across the face of Ringworld, exploring all these other hominid cultures. And what I mean by that is that just the book just sort of wanders. He, they're there is a lack of an overarching plot directing the novel with any type of velocity or force. And so you wind up with Vala leading this group and they just are literally meandering back and forth across the face of the ring world as they meet all these different hominids. And there's no driving overarching strong plot moving the book forward with any type of direction. And, and that, that's a problem with this book. The second problem that I have with this book is a concept that Larry Niven establishes in the first book that's called Rishathra. And Rishathra is a custom between different hominid species where whenever they come together in order to either close a business deal or cement a treaty 
or just to have like a, a communion, um, which and to compare to our culture would be like breaking bread, but they have sex. So Rishathra is interspecies sex that is used again in order to cement deals or in order to break bread as a form of communion in order to alleviate tensions and prevent conflict. And it could have some interesting plot lines if he had developed them well, but it just sort of sits out there. And then he unfortunately becomes fixated on Rishathra or Rish, with Rishing, Rish or Rishing, which is the act of engaging in Rishathra. And it just happens over and over and over and over. And there's no real point or direction to it other than his um, apparent fixation on it to the point where it gets a little weird. It, it kind of borders into some Robert A. Heinlein territory and some of Robert A. Heinlein's stranger stuff. Um, and I could have done without the, the Rishathra. He could have he, he could have hit on it and then come off of it a little bit. And it just goes on and on and on in the book and it becomes an issue. So that was the second problem. But the third problem, and this is the biggest problem here with Ringworld Throne, is that by the time you get to the Ringworld Throne, all the big ideas are spent. Larry Niven has fired those bullets out of his revolver. The whole big idea of the celestial scale megastructure, all the workings of the celestial scale megastructure, putting it back into place, the engineering of it. He's introduced all of his main characters. So all of those really heavy uh, plot lines and ideas are gone. And he's just left with this massive ring world, this massive um, thematic universe that he's now working in. And then he inserts all of these characters. He has these numerous characters with the uh, machine people in Vala. He's got all these characters going with Louis Wu. And it, it just gets away from him. Larry Niven is a very competent writer, but he's not a master wordsmith. He's not on the par with Robert A. Heinlein. He's not on the par with Joe Haldeman. Those are master wordsmiths who have the skill and ability to handle something like that. And, and honestly, it just gets too big for Larry Niven, in my opinion, and he loses control of it. And that and the lack of an overarching plot really become problematic for this book. So this is the Ringworld Throne. What's my final verdict on it? Um, my final verdict is, is that if you loved Ringworld and Ringworld Engineers, this is one of your favorite science fiction universes uh, that you've ever read about. You like it right up there with like Dune and then some of the other classics and you really just want to learn more about Ringworld and all the different hominids uh, that populate uh, Ringworld, then you will like this book. You'll, and you'll enjoy it because that's what it is. It's just sort of a meandering exploration of Ringworld. If you weren't just absolutely captivated by the first Ringworld novel and uh, Larry Niven's writing just didn't do it for you and you weren't uh, uh, enthralled with uh, the characters that he inserted into those books, then I would not recommend this book. Because honestly, at the end of the day, uh, this really isn't that good of a book. It, it has issues and the fact that it doesn't have an overarching plot uh, and that uh, Larry Niven's prose isn't up to the task of maintaining it. And it kind of flies off in a lot of different directions and he's not able to control it. So at the end of the day, it, it's not that good a book. It's not a bad book, but it's certainly it is certainly not up to the level of Ringworld or Ringworld Engineers. And uh, that's my that's my review there of the Ringworld Throne. I will say there is a a, a bit of a bright uh, bright spot to the story. I've started on the fourth book, which is the last one in the series. We're not counting the prequels. So I've just started re reading uh, Ringworld's Children by Larry Niven, which was published in two thousand and four. I'm about a quarter of the way into it, and I can say that so far I am liking Ringworld's Children better than Ringworld's Throne. Uh, so that's sort of the silver lining to this story. But that's it. That's my review of uh, The Ringworld's Throne. If you've read The Ringworld's Throne, I'd love to hear what your ideas are on it. Please put those down in the comments section below. I do read and try to respond to all the comments. I really enjoy reading the comments and would love to hear what you guys think about The Ringworld Throne and the other books in the series. But with that, I'm going to wrap this one up and say this is Grammaticus saying take care, be safe, and I'll catch you guys next time.